Howdy, this is Toby. And this is Sean. And we're back for some more record reviews. Uh-huh. We've been gone for a couple weeks. Um, hey, I never pitch anybody to promote the fucking uh, uh, YouTube show, but I can't promote it on uh, Facebook anymore, so it'd be really cool if some of y'all would share it on Facebook or something. And I might be sending it to some of y'all to get in touch with me that I know you'll watch the show, but... Um, what happened? What? What are you talking about? <laughs> What's going I on? I told him I wasn't talking about with him <laughs> until we got on the show. I, uh, uh, let me see. I was chatting with a bunch of, like, QAnon conspiracy type people in the middle of the night. And, um, I was asking them why everyone who doesn't buy into all their stupid conspiracy shit has to be a pedophile. And then they were saying, well, you've just outed yourself as a pedophile, you fucking pedophile. <laughs> wow. you know? And then I said, you got me wrong. I don't think children are sexy. I think they're tasty. And then I got banned for a month. So I'm oh. off. I'm off. Yeah. For um, liking to eat little children? I mean, dude. Se- mm-hmm. Whatever. Yeah, man, those people, I mean, in the, whatever, they uh, goaded me till I said something stupid. Right. And then they fucking went and told on me. Yeah. And, and, you know. He's a child cannibal. It's because I work all night. I know I should have better things to do with my time, but sometimes when I'm up at four in the morning, that's like something I do to stay awake is chat. Yeah. On Newsmax and Fox News with people I disagree with and act like I don't know what the the party line is. Right. And get everyone to call me names and stuff. Right. And then my blood's pumping and then I'm up and then it's time to wake everyone up. And, and you then know. you're banned and then our show goes down <laughs> to I'm banned. <laughs> Go I kind of crossed the line from like being cool to like uh, you know yeah. saying I eat children, you right? Know? Right. Which I don't even eat shrimp. I'm, I've been a vegetarian for you know f- close to fifteen. Oh, years. so you're not even a pescatarian? No, I don't. You eat don't eat seafood either. either? No. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that's the new theme of this show is 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 uh, healthy living. <laughs> uh-huh. Aren't you glad you can start clicking it off right now? Did you Here's find that when you became lecture. a veg- Yeah. <laughs> you find your energy levels increased when you stop I'm eating tired meat. all the time because I work at night and I <laughs> yeah. drink coffee all the time. And I sleep whenever I can. And I'm 51 years old and I try to take long walks. And I don't get and pick up games or fucking get on a skateboard anymore. Yeah. I yeah. want to be built to last. Wait, but, uh, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. So you can put your foot in someone's ass. Hell yeah. Yeah. <laughs> How long is the band for? 60 days or 30? It's for 30 days. Okay. Yeah, so I might be like sharing this with some of y'all individually and asking you if you you wouldn't mind sharing it. Also, um, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I played a show. I I went to a kick-ass show. I saw fucking uh, Testament, Exodus, and Death Angel. Fuck yeah. And I got there really early and saw all of Death I saw all of everything. I I missed the first couple songs of Exodus because I was told my car would be towed it was parked across the street that same the fucking rhyme zone. at yeah 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 and emos the show was there. at emos there were so many people there yeah the parking was crazy but actually i drove around and i found someone just left and oh, i cool. got in yeah but still like when i got back to AutoZone, like every car in the row up to mine had been towed and mine, mine was still there wow. or, i don't know if they've been towed they just weren't there Ooh. anymore yeah you yeah know? so Jeez, anyway that's crazy but fucking um who took the show who was who, who testament headlined? testament, testament yeah exodus was second to last exodus was middle slot yeah. and death mm-hmm. and death angel was awesome i got to be right up close exodus was awesome testament was musically on on just a great level like they you can tell it's like they're playing thrash metal but those guys could so these little jazzy things show up and like even like alex skolnick on lead guitar like i always wanted to clap at the end of his solos like at a jazz show because they were that good yeah and they had dave lombardo on drums and they had what's his name steve from death on uh, dejorio on on bass i think mm-hmm. anyway yeah. awesome 
Like, everyone in that band, like, who's not an original member, they got, like, the best person yeah. they could. I mean, I guess everyone High does when they replace personnel. members is get the best person they can. Right. But it just so happens that Testament can get the best people. Yeah, you know? everyone. Right, right. Yeah, so it's really a stellar lineup, and it was, it was great. I really loved their... Uh, um, last album titans of creation but it's now a couple years uh old i'd never seen any of the bands before exodus's new stuff was really strong all the bands are really strong that's a good show how long's dave lombardo been playing i bought I, uh this is his first tour he just joined a couple wow, months ago that's great yeah they had gene hoglin who was in death who you know i mean i mean pretty stellar drummer Fun you know so anyway uh before that so i mean where else would you go you said you bought something there I bought the tickets over two years ago. Oh, that's right. The, it got the, canceled. The, it'd been canceled a bunch of times. I've been, you know, honestly, since I've been doing the show this year, I, I spend a lot of money on CDs, and I don't want to spend big money on concert tickets. Yeah. A lot of, I'm hesitant to do it. I will do it. I, but I've been trying to go see local shows when I'm not too fucking lazy. Right, you know? right. Yeah. Speaking of local shows coming up, Yardworks playing with Chris Gates uh, and Minge. Awesome. Take a look at this. Just just click a picture of that right there, and then and share it on Facebook. And then and cut us care. out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh huh. That's gonna be a fun show. Yeah, I've never played Hotel Vegas before, and I'm stoked to play. Uh, Ian from uh, Riverboat Gamblers is playing with him, and I think Chris is gonna be playing some old songs of uh, Poison Thirteen, Big right. Boys. So oh, man, for me, that's, that's awesome because the Big Boys are band that got me into punk rock and uh for the most part and uh poison 13 was one of the first bands i saw when i moved to town uh, in 1986 so that's really exciting for me where was that show at that was at liberty lunch it was a show that was a benefit to put out a tape for daniel johnston and it had uh poison 13 was halfway through the bill it had uh black spring Texas Instruments, Poison 13, Glass Eye, and Zeitgeist, who were later the Reavers. Wow. Yeah, it was kind of like if you see the uh, IRS Cutting Edge show that was out in 1985. Yeah. It's kind of like almost all the bands that were on that, you know. Right, right. Yeah, it was kind of like a replay of that. And, of course, I'd seen that, and I was 15, so I was like, oh, those are all the bands I've been meaning to see. That's you know? awesome. Yeah. yeah. I, uh -huh. I think I've seen Glass Eye, like, seven times because they were either on a touring bill uh, with bands that I grew up listening to or... But, yeah, they were an Austin staple, I swear to God. Um, Brian yeah. Beatty from Glass Eye is someone who made me want to get into bass playing. And so is Chris Gates, you know. That's awesome. And, honestly, I mean, there's... A handful of bass players I look up to in town, and I mean, that's like 40% of them right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm sorry, not to bad, but there's plenty of great musicians in town, but in terms of people, I, whatever, I don't want to dig my hole any deeper, but yeah, there's some a few people I put on a pedestal as fucking, you know, I've emulated, you know. Well, and one is in yard work. Candy, she's an incredible bass player. Yeah, Candy's a great bass player. Yeah. When are you guys going to start swapping duties, you know? Uh, well, I did start swapping with John Motard. Uh, oh, we played with the Bulimics. Oh, that's right. So we played with the Bulimics 25th anniversary. I'm going to get to the record reviews. Uh, that was awesome. Um, I had a weird chat with uh, another band member. Uh, we, You know, it was great to see everybody else. Uh, but they were saying that, uh, you know, I was saying I did a YouTube show. They asked about you. Mm -hmm. And I said, he and I do a show where we talk about new music. And then a couple of people were like, I don't listen to any new music. There's no good new music. And then I just let them keep talking. And they were like, well, the, uh, you know, if the mentors came out now, they'd be canceled, mm -hmm. you know. Oh, that whole canceled topic yeah. came up. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, uh -huh. yeah. But like... <laughs> Whatever. The, here's the thing: is I saw the mentors a few times, and played with them, and um, they were uh, always canceled. And the only reason we ever heard of them was Tipper Gore. You know, right? I mean, right. So, so. And the thing is, the truth is, there were more people at the Bulimics reunion show 
that we played than it, either time I've seen the mentors. Right. You know? Right. And not to take anything away from the mentors. Sure. They never played the Irwin Center. If they were on MTV, it was fucking eight seconds in a news story that had something to do with the PMRC because, you right. know. Right. You know, and I first heard of Gigi Allen from Geraldo Rivera, so there's that too. You know, like if Gigi were around today, yeah. like, you know, like, it's, it's not, not going like to get us. Everyone knows their songs. Exactly. You know? They were buried back then because they were, uh, you know, just. Yeah. Yeah. As insane as they were, you know, but uh, but yeah, I think canceled is just another word you can and supplement for, uh, you know, extreme, if you will, or uh, doesn't really meet the the I don't know, just doesn't really play into the the accepted realm. But that's just it, right? Like everyone who bitches about cancel culture simultaneously participates in cancel culture right right right. it's just supporting things you like and not supporting things you don't like and really the only vote you have is with your money you know right i mean you i vote not say don't go vote but like on a daily basis you know your constant voting is like where you spend your money and you don't want to give it to people that are gonna spend it whatever in ways you don't like. All right, so there's the records. The rec cancel culture, man. Yeah. So anyway, uh, da, 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 da. we can't do that one this week. Right? Yeah, we're I totally doing. To it. It. I didn't you didn't listen to, listen to it. it, but you you go ahead. Yeah, I want to hear it. Okay, okay, okay. We gotta start because it's the biggest release. Dun 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 dun. Jazz Sabbath Volume Two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, fucking. Uh, this is great. Uh, this is Adam Wakeman, uh, who actually played... Okay, so this, like, fucking Traveling Wilburys has a bullshit story in the liner notes about this fictional account that, that Jazz Sabbath was this band that uh, predated Black Sabbath, and Black Sabbath ripped them off, and these guys, this lost album, whatever, the studio burned down or whatever, and it's a good story, but it's really not true. And the real story is Adam Wakeman, who's played keyboards with Ozzy's band and Black Sabbath, uh, is the son of Rick Wakeman, who played uh, keyboard of uh, prog rock god uh, Rick Wakeman from Yes, who played on Sabracadabra, which is also covered here. Um, anyway, uh, he started when he was on tour of Black Sabbath in 2013 when he'd be in hotel bars kind of working on jazz arrangements of Black Sabbath songs from the set. And uh, it works, you know? I mean, it's kind of like... Uh, the piano sometimes reminds me of Vince Giraldi who did the Peanuts yes. music. Yep. And then, uh, man, the guitar... <laughs> I'm sorry, I meant to look this up. Who fucking played guitar on, like, Ren and Stimpy? You know, like... Right, right. What's that style? Yeah, yeah. That's like, uh, John Crick... Wait, what was the name of that band? I, don't, I can't think of what style anyway, that is, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like That was a Flaming Lederhosen was the name of that band, though. That, Flaming Lederhosen? Yeah, that was the band that actually performed all those songs, <laughs> like the intro and the outro on Ren and Stimpy. I don't know how I remember Yeah, I, Yeah, there's a lot... Of, like, I like West Montgomery, maybe, like... this. Uh, anyway, um... So, uh, they do that, and uh, it, some of these songs, I mean, it'll take you a couple times to recognize. Like, they start off with Paranoid. Uh, I really love the cover of Snowblind. They do Sabbath Cadaver, Rick, Rick Wakeman played on. Black Sabbath, the song Black Sabbath to me sounds like uh, it could be on, uh, like, the moody part of a James Bond soundtrack. You mm, know, okay, with that yeah, yeah. Change, you right. know, I've been watching a lot of James Bond. I watched Spectre and Skyfall in the last week, like over and over while I was trying to sleep. And uh, so maybe I have James Bond on my mind, but that's what the Black Sabbath sounds like in a jazz arrangement. No, that's a great uh, analogy. But but the uh, let me see the people who actually everyone has fake names. Uh, uh, Adam uh, Wakeman is Milton Keynes, which is a famous uh, football team, right, uh -huh. in the UK. I knew it was something very British. I had to look it up. Like, is that a famous building or what the fuck is it? Milton Keynes? Milton Keynes. I, I don't follow soccer. Yeah. But, I mean, I mean very, very loosely, but uh, I'll watch it if it's on. But these two other guys, Jerry Meehan on bass, Ash Sohn, they're like British session guys. And, oh yeah, their stage names are good. They're like, uh... Oh my god. 
Derek Smalls. Yeah, Juan Take. Yeah. <laughs> Juan Take. Yeah. And he's on drums. Ash Stone, Juan Take on drums and Jacques Tifono <laughs> on on upright bass. Anyway, these are guys I looked them up because they have like instructional videos on uh YouTube. You can find them very easy. And they're British session guys who play on the records of like Adele and Robbie Williams and My like God, Top that's Seal. You right, know? right, right. So, yeah, I mean, so the playing is real good. It's very tasteful. This is something I actually that I put on. I listened to it enough to make up for you not listening Thank to you, it. Thank you, Toby. Yes. Uh-huh. I put it on because, man, you can I'll put this on again. any context, and it might be a while before someone picks up what the fuck it is. There's so what's a couple the singing songs. Like? What's the singing There's like? no singing. It's There's all no singing. instrumental. Okay, the okay. melody will be carried. Okay, so here's the deal. Conceptually, I'm not making a direct comparison saying this is just as classic as that, but conceptually, here's what it reminded me of, is Macklemore Avenue by uh, um, Booker T and the MGs, came out in 1970 in the spring. And it's just rearrangements of the melodies of the songs, you know, I mean, very loose interpretations, but they definitely hit all the main melodies right. of the song. I love this album. It's so classic. Uh, you know, they pretty much redo Abbey Road. I don't, I try not to, I'm not going to be a, a YouTube show that reviews classic albums. I think that's the most useless, besides it reacting, you know. Right, Like, right, right now, this is a reaction video of Sean reacting to me talking. Yeah, right? yeah. Whoa! <laughs> you said that about cancel culture? Oh, shit. You're still that's, tripping on that, I right? can't believe he's I'm reviewing old lines. records and talking about cancel culture. <laughs> Fuck this video. This is, the, this is the worst music review show ever. And he's banned from Facebook. I can't trust this guy. Yeah. <laughs> this video is blowing my mind. It's, it's happening right it's now. It's a real mind blower. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, check this out. It's, it's, it's bordering on lounge jazz, but it's cool. And it's not kitschy. It's not a joke. It's, it's, uh, it's legit. It's fun. Can um, we do it here? That's just, I'm still on reactions can we do reactions <laughs> videos to live television that's just happening now that no one's even reacting watching to tv yeah with Sean and Toby yeah live like, live reactions uh -huh. to new events to current events damn <laughs> i've seen this commercial 50 <laughs> times what Look, yeah yeah this super bowl's crazy can you believe they just scored another touchdown whoa that guy uh, ran really fast I watched a, a live stream review video of the Bon Jovi concert down the street. Oh. Last <laughs> yeah. Nice. He waited. He's very polite. He waited till he was out of the building to say that he's not coming back to see Bon Jovi. And, you know, but like, it was like, he's like, I don't want to talk about it. While he's walking out of the building. It was good. It was, uh, yeah, there's some things I'd like to talk about later. And when he gets in the car, he's like. This John is Bon Jovi's voice is shut. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. yeah. he uh -huh. should start recording his vocals like Paul Stanley. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, so uh, d -d 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 moving on. So let's get into the stuff we can really discuss between ourselves. Where are we going on this? Let's do Audrey Horn. Okay, Audrey Horn. I love this cover, huh? That looks like a cool wood print on blue. I like the colors. Yeah, and it's stuff. really pretty. That's really cool. Okay, Audrey Horn from Bergen, Norway. Devils, the Devil's Bell. This the is their Devil's seventh studio Bell. record. Yeah, and here they are. Here's the crew. Um, yeah, they're big in Norway. They've won a Norwegian Grammy. They're a hard rock band. Um, if I could compare this to uh, the the influence I'm hearing the most when I listen to this. Do you have one you're thinking of? Yeah. Okay, let's say it at the same time. Okay. One, two, three. Iron, Iron Maiden, Maiden yeah. Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. <laughs> okay, yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh huh. Absolutely. And then after that, it would be Judas Priest. Uh, Ozzy. Yeah, yeah, Ozzy, absolutely. Ozzy. Yeah. Right? Yeah, okay. Cool. Well, we're on the same page that but we Moon. both love Iron Maiden, right? Yeah, absolutely. We've both seen Iron Maiden. At yeah, the same time. Same time. Yeah. <laughs> and we were able to react to each other. We, you Iron should, Man, I, I man, I wish we had a reaction video to that because I was like, woo! <laughs> no, yeah. no, I was like, 
oh yeah, my god, yeah, yeah. And then you were like, hell yeah, man. Yeah. Uh-huh. Especially yeah. when Motorhead came out and did Ace of Spades. Yeah, I you was were like, like, totally headbanging. Yeah, yeah. He, uh-huh. and I was like, the Ace of Spades. And I high five that dude behind us. And I started singing, uh, I said, play Road Crew. And then you said, and then you were like, play Road Crew. And I said, don't say what I'm saying. And then I made you choose a different song. But anyway, that's pretty much our reaction to that show. Yeah. Oh, it was so good. And Dio played. So oh, we got to see Dio and Motorhead and Iron Maiden at the Woodlands in Houston. That was so awesome. Was but, awesome. but back to Audrey Horn. You know, back to Iron Maiden. And uh, I was listening to this. I wanted to see what John Motar, John Wilson, had to think about this. And he, he, we enjoyed it. But, but uh, he... Uh, Iron Maiden, Seven Son of Seven Son might might be their coolest album, but it's their best album if you grade it song by song. If you go through it and, like, every song is a fucking hit, that's why there's, like, six singles. You know, there's heavier albums, you know, Peace of Mind might be cooler, Number of the Beast might be cooler, but actually the best album, the Seven Son of the Seven Son. Anyway, this yeah. is good. What? A trooper, I don't know, man. Like, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. dope. Yeah. yeah, all that stuff up through then. Anyway, uh, so, uh, Devil's Bell. I listened to this album a lot. I did too, and at, listen, at first I was like, oh, I don't know, and, and I didn't, listen, I didn't know that they were from uh, Norway. Norway. Berg in Norway. Norway, yeah. Second, okay, the city that brought you Immortal. Wow. And uh, it was like the Nor- capital of Norwegian black metal. Uh-huh. And anyway, yeah, yeah, so go ahead. No, I, no, no, I was just going to say, when I first put this on, I was like, okay, uh, yeah, definitely getting Iron Maiden and Judas Priest feeling here. Um, but it wasn't until, like, the vocals kicked in that I was like, wait, these guys have to be from from Norway, you know, or there's Sweden, accent, you know, yeah. like, you can tell. Not from the accent, but, like, from the, just the style of lyrics that are like really bold and I don't want to say cheesy, but it's like it it's an element that makes them unique and more similar to Iron Maiden and more similar to the vocal um like the the lyrics to older eighties metal songs, which I appreciated. I was like, no one's really doing that. I think I feel like the the lyrical content to modern music that sounds similar to this, it oh. it's like an updated like they're singing about different stuff, but he's still singing about like in a way this reminded me of Saxon because it's yeah. almost like like victory type songs, you know, and like we're gonna rock to live, you know, and I love like, that. It triumphs, but, yeah, but, but yeah. I'm not singing high. Yeah, no, all the songs it's uplifting rock uh, sure. lyrics. There's no girlfriend songs. Um, no cancel culture songs. No, yeah, there's no songs about <laughs> cancel culture. Or getting banned from Facebook. Or, or, or baiting people to cancel you. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. But uh, let me see. Oh, you know what else John told me is that the local office of Napalm Records are the American offices in Austin. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, well, so that's pretty cool. That may or may that might be true. I mean, I, I, I'm going to have to take him on his word there. He usually knows what he's talking about. But... Uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, this album's awesome. Uh, it's it's a hard rock album. The singer, um, so yeah, let me see. I wrote down. Oh yeah, so so Toshi, the singer. Um, sometimes when I listen to to singers in rock bands, like I, I formulate the backstory, you know, in my <laughs> and and sometimes there's guys like in the Bon Scott school, that, like I figured out I could sing after I had a bunch of friends in rock bands, and then there's other singers who are like I starred in like a few high school musicals, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This yeah. guy's the latter. He's I been started. Singing in a, he's been he singing. He's old. a singer. Right, yeah. right. Uh-huh. And I want to call up some of the serious singers like I was like what do you think of this this guy's a real singer you know yeah. and like he's a real hard rock singer just Toshi. like the guy from Satan like that's I feel the same way oh like, yeah you can tell uh-huh. those dudes are fucking they've been doing this their whole lives but yeah but this guy's got a more accessible voice than the guy the guy in Satan is baritone. a little more baritone yeah. this guy's a little more upper alto and he's out, yeah, very pal- uh-huh. yeah, really palatable yeah and it fits the it fits the genre really well his, it, his, it for me it's voice. like comfort listening because I, I, I wish there was like fucking 15 bands like this on the radio and it would make me feel right at home, you know? And in Austin. Yeah, in Austin. But yeah, some of the other guys, the guitar, one of the guitar players, Arve Isdale, known as Isdale, was in, is also an enslaved who are 
uh, I mean, they put out like nine, ten albums, and they're like a, really progressive. And like uh, when I watch like Sea of Tranquility, um, I bought the Enslaved album last year because it made everybody's top ten list. It was the one album, but those guys are really into progressive rock. Yeah, yeah. And I got it, and it was a little too progressive, too progressive. for me in some parts. The vocals were a little too. Uh, too clean in a few parts, okay. you know. So anyway, I uh, I gave that CD to John, who is very grateful, and he has all the other enslaved CDs, nice. and uh, people love them. They're legendary. And then the other guitar player, Thomas Toff Toggin, is in the Doom Band Sog. You want to check out? Anyway, uh, we've also got Cajentil Grieve on drums and Espen Leon on bass. Anyway, wait, uh, I thought King of Hell was in that band also. No, he's not from Gorgoroth. Yeah. He was in the band. So uh, some of these guys have a black metal background. Gotcha. Yeah, and as uh, black metal seems to be uh, the the regular music, you know, uh, in Mortals. Norway, Sweden. Yeah, yeah. uh huh, uh huh. So, so it's pretty cold here and it's pretty dark here in Norway, but one place I'm going to go to that's a little colder. And a little darker is in Finland here. That was a that was a badass segue, and this is a badass fucking record. Uh, yeah, this great. This is a great record. If you're into uh, black metal, then you're gonna love Archgoat. Um, this is Worship the Eternal Darkness. Wait, is this Worship the Eternal? No, no this is the EP. Uh, all, all, all Christianity, Christianity ends. Yeah. Yes, the four song, seventeen minute EP. Check out that cover. This is some blasphemous black metal from Finland. Uh, they're from Tur Turka. They're from Turka. Yeah, which yeah, is the, it's the oldest city in Finland. Yeah, Turku. Turku. Turku is the oldest city in Finland. It's the sixth biggest city in Finland. Not a lot of bands from there, uh, but uh, Michael Monroe, whose album we're going to be record, uh, reviewing coming up, is is from the Turku. This is the uh, this is the guitar player singers. Tattoo of six 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 on his hand, and I just thought it would look really cool. So, you gotta see that. <laughs> Do you see that? This is that six 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 design. That's the guitar player's hand, and this was the show recorded in twenty sixteen at. Uh, I can't remember. Okay, so so we've got uh, uh, da, 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 da. Angel Slayer on bass, <laughs> vocals, right? Whose real name is Rainier Polakanaho. Sorry. Finnish speakers, <laughs> and then we've got Ritual Butcher, who's who's uh, Rainier's brother, Kai Puanala Kanaho on guitar. And those guys started band in 1989. They headed till 1993. They put out one EP and a series of demos back then that may establish them as legendary black metal bands. They came out back out in 2004. Four, they took an 11 year hiatus. Yeah, and they, they said they did it because the black metal scene was becoming too commercial and they disappeared from, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's always an true. era of mystery of black metal. Right. I saw Behemoth once and I gotta say, it, I might have said this before, it's really hard to look scary when you're having equipment issues, just like everyone else. When Satan <laughs> yeah. didn't like, protect your equipment. Right, you know? right, right. Yeah, yeah. uh-huh. Well, everyone... Ha equipment issues brings us all down to the same level. Let me tell you something else that brings a death <laughs> metal or a black metal band's uh, a burning image down church is when uh, well that that heightens cover. their image. But yeah. the live show that I was watching on YouTube of them was yeah. at an outdoor festival. Yeah, and just there's just something about a black metal show when they when it shows the crowds or the band's perspective of the crowd and the crowd is kind of mulling and it's complete daylight and then some people aren't watching and i don't know yeah i kind of took away from that oh really <laughs> yeah it was like the stage is just they're fucking into it and these guys have like the angel slayer wears like these like five inch spike like nail bracelets you know uh and he's like you know face painted everything the whole band is just into it and then like they pan out to the crowd and like I don't know. You can see people like eating popcorn and like <laughs> buying T-shirts at the rec, you know at the merch stand like thirty yards away, and it's complete like bright daylight. Um, anyway, but yeah, but no, this I can't. What do you think about his vocals? Talk about his vocals. Well, when we get to the last song, the semen of anti mastery. <laughs> He sounds like a bullfrog. Like, you know, yes. like, and I can only sing like that first thing in the morning. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I can't do it now. I've been up like it's a real croaking kind of thing. It's croaking, it's, exactly. He's croaking is what he's doing. Yeah, 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 he is. And I swear to God, I thought that, uh, 
or I swear to Satan, <laughs> hail Satan, hail Satan. Uh, 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 I thought that he had some kind of type of uh, modulator on his voice, but no, that's his real fucking croaking ass black metal voice. It's brutal as fuck. Uh, I'd have to sleep at the studio and before my first cup of coffee, like, turn the mics on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bless the semen of the <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, these are some song titles you can yell out at, at the show. Uh, this record I was playing at work the other day, so I oh, went to the good. office. Yeah, and uh, I didn't have Sean just got a really good new job, but it sounds like he's blowing it. Yeah, I'm blowing yeah. it by listening to uh, fucking satanic rock. Uh, and I almost really blew it because, like, everyone had to come to the office a couple days ago. Uh -huh. And I had my headphones in. And then yeah. somebody tapped me because our manager was, uh -huh. like, saying something to all of us. And so I, instead of just, like, a smart person would just turn the volume down on their computer, I just pulled my headphones out and, like, then the music like went live on my computer and it was up really loud and so everyone heard a couple seconds. Twenty people at a e-commerce company heard Archgoat for about three seconds. Oh like, yeah, and stuff yeah. But like immediately, everyone like jumped up and started fucking like it started uh, like it was like a pit. pit. Yeah, that is a cool job. <laughs> and, yeah, man. and the, my manager like like ripped her shirt off and she started like slicing herself uh, up. Uh -huh. and, like, yeah, it was crazy. It was really crazy. <laughs> and then two people. What's that thing where your hands start bleeding like Virgin Mary, like the Christ? Like that started happening. So, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, it was it was awesome. I'm gonna do it again. But no, this is a great record. It was a lot of fun. I want to hear their first shit from '89. How much does it differ from this stuff now? Are they keeping it real? Uh, I, you know, the thing is, almost all their material has come out since they got back together. Mm -hmm. It sounds like they were more a legend than a band, you know? Yeah. Like, with a legendary demo and one single back in the day. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. since they come back, there's been like seven albums. Right. You know? Yeah, they're like, on fire. It, yeah, we really disappeared to learn how to play to back up our legendary status. You know? <laughs> yeah, we got some. I to prove. say that having never heard the original shit. And someone <laughs> come, feel free to get in the comments and tell me what a poser I am for not knowing their original shit. But uh, I just got hip to Arch Goat, you know. And you know, 17 minutes, this is great, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, and the new drummer since 2017, Goat Aggressor. Yeah, he's, he's great. Yeah, he's like, bah, 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 bah. Well, okay, and here's the thing. Have you, uh -huh. Did you listen to their previous records? Or any of their previous no, records? No, I've only heard this one. Okay, so the, the show that I watched of them from 2016 uh -huh. today uh, was a little bit... Their songs were a little slower. They weren't as like aggressive and oh, fast. Yeah. And it wasn't like blast beat stuff. Uh, so this isn't all blast beat. They like did they, they do a lot of breakdowns and creative, um, you know, arrangements. But their earlier stuff, at least the shit that I saw from 2016 from this festival, um, they were playing like slower stuff and a little more heavier uh, type rock. So um, dude, in Turka, Finland, in December they get 13 hours of daylight. Of Month. <laughs> wow. The wow. average temperature there for the whole year is 42 degrees Fahrenheit. Do you think that plays into all the metal and black metal bands? Is this what that turns into? Is is uh, would, the, would these guys have been we Vikings? We have it so good here. Yeah. We'd be such posers and we did it. Like, the weather's so nice. Here, yeah. You yeah. know? Uh -huh. Except yeah. in the summer, it gets hot. So we, you know, hang out inside. Because it's cool. so hot and sunny in Austin, and, you know, like, what what's the typical band profile that you think should should be playing here all the time like maybe just a Fucking surf rock band 311 <laughs> <laughs> 311 reminds me of like I was cool in, in high school. I yeah. mean, I was cool in high school, but 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 like if I had no, you a band, fucking if, if, if I had a band, yeah, I wasn't a good student. I went to a lot of high schools, <laughs> but 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 cool wasn't the issue. Anyway, so so say like we graduate in 1990, and me and my best buddies have a band doing what's cool in 1990, <laughs> you know, which is like fun <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And we never changed because we never had to. Right, right. right. Like, you guys just sound like, like presidents of the United States or, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you were still, yeah, I don't know. It just sounds like, that's for me, that's the what if man. You know? like, <laughs> right. That's what we, at, yeah. the be, at, at best, you know? Right, like, right. Because, uh -huh. I mean, they still pack it in. Yeah, I, yeah, I wish I could have been in a band as good like as 311. Yeah, yeah, fuck, man. I'm hating, I'm player hating, yeah. you know. <laughs>
<laughs> right. I get in a wormhole, a rabbit hole, where I start watching 311 videos. It's awful. You do. Yeah. Toby shows me videos on his uh, TV a lot. We watch YouTube videos after the show, and like, yeah, you put on that 311, but I could see from your history, you like, watched, watched at least 70 it. other 311 videos. Yeah, so. yeah. And then, and then he started texting me 311 videos at like 2 a.m., and then. You get in a rabbit I'll, hole of looking at uh, um, bad, crusty punk. Uh, <laughs> crusty punk folk music which yeah. is like hot now yeah i, I still have and i hate it i'm like it's like a car wreck i can't stop looking at like <laughs> it's like when i'm trying to stay up in the middle of the night yeah. i oh boy remember God. when i called you a couple weeks ago and i mm -hmm. and like something really bad was going on and i needed your help and you wouldn't let me get <laughs> get through and say that because you had to tell me about this 311 video that you were watching and i was like toby can you just stop talking i really need emergency help right now you're the I only person to awake the i need to the hospital i've hurt myself really bad my phone's about to die and 311 i had to hang up and call my grandmother and yeah <laughs> Yeah. All right, so the last record that we're going to talk about from the fourth biggest city in New York. We already we remember when we talked to Immolation, they were from the third biggest city. In so New this York. is the Yonkers. fourth biggest, and it's it is Ro the city that brought you Rochester. Rochester. Yeah. That brought you what? Kodak. Oh. And uh, <laughs> wait, the film company? Yeah, and Z Rox. Oh. <laughs> like there's some famous music people from Rochester, but kind of like Turku, like they put like if you're in Turku, you probably went to Helsinki to get big. You know, like Michael Monroe didn't get big in Turku. Right. And likewise, Cab Calloway and Rivers Cuomo did not get big in Rochester. Right. But they're right. from there. Sure. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh huh. But these guys are completely repping Rochester. It's fucking undeath. And you're gonna wish you were from Rochester after <laughs> listening to this fucking band, and you're gonna start. Cab Calloway, if you were still alive, would claim he was from he Rochester. He moved back to Rochester. <laughs> he moved back to there. He started his own club undeath. and call yeah. it Undeath Club because uh -huh. this is such a great record. Yeah. <laughs> so this album is called. Uh, uh, it's time to rise from the grave. It's no, wait. It's time <laughs> dot 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 to rise. to rise from the grave. In case you had another idea, this about is what time some for. good fucking time death metal. Uh, I love uh, this band. They're old school as shit. Um, what do you like? Uh, you got something you like musically about these guys the best? I think that, yeah. So I think they're really brass tacks death metal without a lot of fluff and phasers. And there's no, not like death metal has all of that, but they're really just a pure organic death metal band. Um, and, and it's not overproduced, which I really, really dig. And it's not like any type of progressive death metal. It's just like in its raw form. And it's great. And I love the vocalist. Uh, his. His vocal style, uh, you know, I, so I told you I was talking to my buddy Noble today and I, I texted him this record and he, uh, he listened to it and he was like, I appreciate these guys immediately because he has, uh, like a great death metal vo vocal, like his yeah. vocals are very, but I can understand what he's saying. So anyway, but no, these guys, these guys hit all the marks as far as what I'm looking for when I listen to death metal. Man, and they're going to be playing with uh, Dying Fetus. We're talking about, and they're going to be playing first out of five bands with Dying Fetus. Dying Fetus, Chelsea, Grin, Body Snatcher, and Frozen they, Soul they made come a lot of it live. Yeah, yeah. Made, but they're playing first, so if they're you want to check first, them out and check. go at 5 30. Right. But man, there's some, you know what? I like, because to me, this band sounds like they're driven by the rhythm section. And once again, I always love it when you have a sick bass player. And this dude, fucking Tommy Wall, and I don't think he's on their previous album. This is their second album. What a sick bass player, you know? I just feel like a band like them and Cannibal Corpse, Suffocation, sound like it's being driven by the rhythm section. Yes. It's just like pulling everybody along. Like, it really you know, sounds like Keep that. up or don't. Yeah, you know? yeah. Let's it's go, like, motherfucker. The drummer and the bass player got this. Uh -huh. Like, get the play or get the fuck out of the band. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, totally. Uh -huh. Yeah. But no, they're, but the guitar player was like, oh, fucking K. And then the vocalist is like, I will keep up with you guys. <laughs> they all fucking hit the mark. Yeah, you uh -huh. hit the, and it's great. It's really cool. Yeah. It's my favorite record. Out of I think we I looking at the song titles. Okay, oh, I think we have all. the same. Okay, do we have the same? I think we have the same favorite. I ha yes, yes. 
You're and it, one, two, three. Necrobionics. Necro yeah. yeah, song four. And it's the fourth song. Yeah. yeah. Fe- following my formula, yep. your sickest song should be fourth. And the second sickest, right? Uh, well, uh, no, Enhancing the Dead. That's pretty fucking <laughs> sick. When you watch the live, cause, yeah, they're like the songs about giving weapons to corpses, you know. So, so you, so Toby has a CD player and it doesn't have a display, so you can't re, like it can't you can't see what the song titles are. But that just makes me think, with such great song titles as this, I would want to everyone to see what I'm listening to. I, I want everyone to see the name <laughs> of this band and the names and the titles of each of these songs. If I'm playing this at work. Or if I could somehow broadcast this outside of my car where people knew what I was listening. Like, uh-huh. I, I love the names of this. The song songs. Rise from the Grave. So, so okay, that being said, I quite often have to Shazam things. And songs I found myself Shazamming were <laughs> The Funeral Within, <laughs> Rise from the Grave, Necrobionics. Like, oh, man. Human Chandelier. Hum, you know what? Hum, what a great idea for a song. Human Chandelier. And immediately the image that came into my head was any excuse to show my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to William for saying, what was that record cover you showed? It's so sick. <laughs> uh-huh. Hooded Menace. The trying to spell. I guess that's a bell. It could be a chandelier. A smoking chandelier. Yeah. Why would a bell be smoking? I don't know. Maybe he had candles in the eyes. Anyway. Or, yeah, who knows? I was imagining something like this when I heard human chandelier. Maybe you it, know? he just ate some chicken wings or something. That's a, yeah, yeah, human chandelier. Yeah, and what else? Uh, yeah, so these guys like to sing about gory subject matter. Wait, head splattered by... Seven ways. Head splattered in seven ways. <laughs> yeah. It's just great. It's great. It's It's like... These guys are lots of fun. If you and, have any, uh, if you ever encounter a child, anyone who has never heard death metal, uh, <laughs> it, you're gonna immediately say, "Son, I I have something to show you," and you're gonna walk that child to your uh, CD player and put on on death because this is a this this thing is what anyone should start off listening to if they want to get into death metal. <laughs> it's a great jump in point, especially if you're. <laughs> Like, younger, want to get in on younger band, these guys. You know, and sometimes they go into a little bit of, like, uh, New Wave, British, Heavy Metal, Iron Maiden, Gallop, kind of, yeah, you know, yeah. with a couple, just a hint of that before they go straight back into the death yeah. metal. So, you know, they have, like, you know, a deeper appreciation for things. It's not just, <laughs> they, are, they also like Iron Maiden. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really deep appreciation for music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toby, will you promise me that uh, uh-huh. if Guardian ever has a, a, a beautiful son or daughter that when you're a grandfather, <laughs> the first one of the first records that you're going to turn your grand whatever in onto would will be on death. Um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's time to rise from the grave. <laughs> I, I'm going to do that if I ever. The have first song Darlene ever heard when she was a baby was "Sound and Vision" by David Bowie. Wow! But she listens to mellower music than me. She, I, I gave her the April March CD and she really liked it. And That's I was really record. stoked to have actually got something in her CD changer. In yeah. Her, you know, otherwise she likes like Kate Bush and Sufjan Stevens, mm. but. uh yeah, so we got uh, Alexander Jones on vocals. Uh, yeah, and uh, not not our local asshole who's going broke. <laughs> the fucking Sandy Hook family. Oh yeah. I hope the Sandy. You know he's definitely hiding money offshore. So I mean, don't accept any fucking uh, uh, <clears throat> bankruptcy uh, from him. Anyway, uh, Kyle Beam on guitar, Tommy Wall met, uh, on bass. He rips it up. Matthew Bruning on drums totally kills it. Jared Welch on guitar. Hope we get to high five these guys when we go early to see Dying Fetus. Fuck yeah. The, and they're on prosthetic, re- prosthetic, prosthetic records. Prosthetic records. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I don't know what the hell label the rest of this shit. I'm pretty sure that Jazz Sabbath is on like something huge. You know. Like, I think if I ever saw. You know what show I would have loved to have seen is uh, Undeath and Apraxic, August's band from Portland. Uh-huh. Yeah, that would have, my 
face would have exploded. Undeath. Well, I think for them, career-wise, I want to see them with suffocation and cannibal corpse. Fuck yeah, with cannibal it. corpse. Yeah. That'd uh -huh. be awesome. And let's just put an And who do we want to too. see Audrey Horn play with? Satan. Uh, I want to see them play with <laughs> Saxon. <laughs> And Iron Maiden, no Iron, Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden at yeah, the and, fucking Moody Center coming right. up. And, yeah. and, and I want to uh -huh. see them with Halford. I want to see them on a Halford bill. Not Judas Priest. Opening for Ozzy. You know what? They seem to be playing like they're very they're way more well known there than here. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh in, in Europe. It'd be or, cool it'd be cool to see them on a uh, bill with Striper. <laughs> <laughs> You know, Striper's fifth record is great. Anyway, enough about <laughs> bad records. Oh, yeah. So, uh, coming up, we, we we took two weeks off. We probably won't do that, right? Yeah. Uh, we got Willie Nelson coming up, uh, and we were talking about some Soul Glow. Oh, some other stuff. Soul Glow, yeah. yeah. Uh, Soul Glow has a new record out, so. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, what else we got? That's it, huh? Yeah. We're at 4617, so that's about as long as we go. All right, we're going to jam this song for you. Thanks for watching. Uh-huh, thank you. Smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please share with your friends, because, yeah, I can't promote this anymore. Yeah, you know? Toby can't Not keep his for, mouth shut. I can't, yeah, I can't keep my cool enough, and I <laughs> have a problem with eating children. This really <laughs> get me into a lot of hot water, and uh, well. culture's going to get me. <laughs>